In this video, we're going to talk about these two properties that the circuits we're solving are going to have, and that is the linearity and superposition principles. So first off, what does it mean for a function to be linear? And that's if it satisfies these two conditions, that if you have two inputs being added together, you can plug them each separately into the function, add up the two outputs, and it's the same answer you'd get if you'd added the numbers first. Secondly, if you scale, if you multiply the input by a number, that's going to happen the same thing, scaling the output. These are the two conditions you need for a function to be linear. If you've taken a class on linear algebra, this is the definition of linear transformation as well. It's the same thing here. This is what we mean by linear. Now, in mathematics, there are lots of linear processes that you will encounter, and we're going to see those in our engineering classes as well. In particular, if you look at resistors, capacitors, and inductors, all of these, when you take about input and output of the function being your voltage and current, they're all going to have a linear relationship. So if you take any of those elements and you double the current through it, it's going to have double the voltage and vice versa. If you take any one of them and put two separate currents combined into there, the ending voltage is going to be the same as if you had taken the two separate currents, found voltages, and added them up. And so because these three elements are linear, it's going to allow us to solve some problems in an easier fashion. And in particular, whenever you have a linear circuit, you can use what's called the principle of superposition. Now, this method is not necessarily uh, the best method to actually use to solve a circuit. However, it is very useful for the theoretical basis for some other methods that we will have and other theorems that are proven. And so what this method does is we say, okay, let's say you have a circuit with more than one source. In this case, we have two sources, a current source and a voltage source. What you can do is you can turn off sources and only turn one on at a time so let's go ahead and draw the circuit where only the current source is going to be turned on. So I have the current source here, 4 amps. And then I have this, this uh, voltage source here, but I want the voltage source to be turned off. So when you turn off a voltage source, that means you want 0 volts. But what does zero volts mean? Zero volts means a short. So we replace the voltage source of the short to turn it off. And if you look at this circuit here, what we have is a current divider circuit. And so if I want to find the current going left here, it would be the total current times the resistance I'm not at over the sum of the resistances. And you're going to get 2 amps going left. In this case, it's also 2 amps going right because both sides are 5 ohms. So the V0 in this circumstance by I times R is going to be a 4 volt drop for V0. Then, once I have solved for the variable I'm looking for with the first source turned on, then I'm going to redraw the circuit Sorry, with just the second source turned on. 2 ohms, V0. So I'll go ahead and include my 10 volt source here. But now I want to turn off the current source. So I want to make it have 0 amps. But 0 amps means there's no current, which means it's an open circuit. So I replace a current source with an open circuit in order to turn it off. And at this point, you see we have a voltage divider circuit. So V0 is going to be the 10 volt initial times the resistance we're at over the sum of the resistances. And what we're going to get here is uh, 2 volts. And so then your final answer by superposition, you take the answer you got for just the first source and add on the answer for just the second source. And so my V0 then, the total voltage across that resistor is going to be 6 volts. So you see, when you're doing principal superposition, 
you have to resolve the circuit for every separate source you have. That's why it's not usually the best method to use. On the other hand, if removing sources actually makes the circuit really simple, like voltage divider and current divider, it might actually be worth using it. However, it's pretty rare that you want to use superposition. There is going to be one example in a much later chapter when we get to it where it's actually required to use superposition. But other than that, we're pretty much not going to be using this method to solve actual circuits.